Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 99 of ASP.NET video series. This is continuation to part 98. If you haven't watched that, I would strongly encourage you to do so. In this video session, we'll discuss about implementing enable button to unlock user accounts. There are two changes that we need to make to this grid view control in order to implement the enable button. The first thing is obviously when we run this project at the moment, when I click this enable button, nothing happens. Okay, so we want to generate the event handler for this enable button. Okay, so how do we generate the event handler? Now right click on the grid view control, go to the properties of the grid view control. So grid view control and then click on the events icon and then you know there is this row command event double click within the text box there so we have this you know row command event handler generated now all I'm doing here is I'm gonna say response dot write you know button clicked okay so now if I go ahead and run this as you might expect when I click the button control you know any button control here we get that message button clicked and I click that again I get that message button click but you know what we basically want to do is when I click this enable button we want to enable or unlock that user account so obviously first we need a stored procedure uh, which we we can call to unlock that user account so to unlock an user account obviously we need to pass in the name of the username that we want to account you know basically unlock okay so let's create that stored procedure and it's going to be a simple update statement so I have a stored procedure here SP enable user account and this is taking an input parameter at username so which user account you want to unlock that's going to come in as an input parameter and then update TBL users set look at that this is the table that we want to update what do we want to do for a locked account for a locked account is locked will be one retry attempts will be the maximum that are allowed in our case it was four and then there will be a locked date and time so basically what we are doing is setting retry attempts to zero is locked to null and then lock date and time to null where username is equal to whatever username that we pass into the stored procedure so when I click this button control okay for this row what's the username this is the username Sarah so I want to unlock Sarah's user account. So on click of this button, I want to retrieve that username and send it to this stored procedure so that it can issue this update statement and unlock that account. So all that is left out now is to, you know, call that stored procedure on the click of this button control. And the most important thing is to retrieve that username and pass it to the stored procedure. So let's see how to do that. Okay. Now at the moment, all we have done is button click. Now how do I get, you know, access to that username? You know, one trick which is very simple to follow is if you look at this uh, ASPX of the HTML of the ASPX page, this button control has got another property called command argument. So command argument. Now I'm going to specify the command argument using the data binder syntax, the eval method. So I'm going to use this eval method here. Command argument is equal to, I'm going to use that angle brackets percentage hash syntax, that data binder eval syntax, and I'm going to specify eval. And if you remember, when we actually get this data, we get we are also getting the username. So if you look at you know the data that's displayed here we are also retrieving username from the database so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the command argument of this button control as that column username column okay so now the command argument attribute of the button control that is rendered within every row of this grid view control is set to the username now in the code behind file I can use the command argument property so how do I get access to the command argument property of that button control? Now you look at this, um, you know, event handler here. We have this E here, grid view command event args. So I can make use of that object that's coming in, grid view command event args, E dot, look at that, command argument. And look at the return type of that. It's an object, but we know username is a string. So I'm going to convert that to a string. And now let's go ahead and run this with this change and see what's going to happen when I click on the enable button of the respective account. So here the username is Jerry. So when I click on enable, look at that, I get Jerry. And when I click 
against Sarah's account, look at that, I get Sarah. So the task of getting the username is done. All that is left out right now is on the click of this every button control, we want to invoke that stored procedure and pass this username that we have retrieved to that stored procedure. So to retrieve the stored procedure, all you need to do is write simple ADO.NET code. So just to save some time in typing, I'm going to copy this ADO.NET code that we have already written in the previous session. I'm going to call this method, you know, private void, maybe let's call this enable user accounts or unlock user accounts, whatever is most appropriate. So enable user accounts, I'm going to copy and paste this code. So that reads the connection string, so that's void. So that reads the connection string from web.config file, create the connection object and the command, specify the SQL command. In our case, the stored procedure is going to be sp enable user account. So that's the name of the stored procedure. And since it's a stored procedure, we are setting the command type as stored procedure. And if you look at this stored procedure, it's expecting a SQL parameter. So we need to create a SQL parameter object. So let's go ahead and create that SQL parameter. Let's call that parameter username is equal to new SQL parameter. And then we need to specify the parameter name. So what's the name of the parameter? At username. And we also need to specify the value for that. So where is the value coming from? The value is coming from this grid view command event args. And we don't have access to grid view command event args object within this method. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass in a parameter. I'm going to say string username. Okay. And I will invoke this method within this event handler so I can pass this e.command.argument to that function. Okay, so for now I'm just saying username as the value. And we need to associate this parameter with the command object. And how do we do that? Command.parameters.add. We want to add the parameter object, parameter username. That's it. We open the connection and we execute. Now, another important thing. If you look at the stored procedure, what it's doing, it's only updating. It's not returning any data, so it's a non-query. So again, if you are new to ADO.NET code, I'll have you know a link to ADO.NET video series as well in the description of this video. So please check that. So command dot execute non-query. Okay, and we don't want to do any sort of data binding here. That's it. And finally, the connection gets automatically closed because we, are, because we are using the using block here. That's it. Enable user account. So what we need to do now within this event handler, I'm going to call that method enable user accounts. And we need to pass in the username. And where am I getting the username from using this command argument property? That's it. So we call that method that should enable the user account. After we enable the user account, we need to reload the data. Otherwise, you know, we will still be looking at the old data. So I can just invoke this get data function that we have written in the previous session of this video series. So get data. Okay, so those are the changes that we need to do. So very simple to implement the enable button. All we have done so far is within the ASPX of this page, we have specified the command argument because we need the username to update, uh, you know, the the user account that is locked. Okay, and we are we are getting that using this data binder dot eval method, and then once we have that username, we are then invoking that stored procedure sp enable user account, passing in that username. Okay, and how are we getting access to that username using this grid view command event args object? So this object has a property called command argument. We are retrieving the property value, you know, whatever we have set here in the code behind file and passing it to this function, which will invoke the stored procedure, pass the same username, and the stored procedure will update the database. Let's see how it works now. Okay, let me go ahead and run this now. So when the web page loads up, look at that. I have this enable button. And let's look at the data at the moment. So if you look at TBL users, you know, all the four accounts are um, basically locked. Let's go ahead and update one of the rows. So I'm going to enable Jerry's row. So if you look at Jerry's row here, 
Jerry's account. Retry items 4 is locked 1 and that's the date and time that's locked. So I'm going to enable that and the moment I do that, look at that, you know, it's updated. So let's go back and check. Look at that, Jerry's account is now enabled. Jerry can go ahead and use his username and password now and log into the system. Similarly, I can go ahead and enable Sarah's account. But look at this, I cannot enable Tom's and Pam's account because 24 hours is not yet passed, you know, since the account is locked. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.